Hey guys, today we're back on Minecraft. We're gonna be building a few things. Uh, we're gonna build the rest of our chorus farm that we started last episode. We're gonna be building a flower farm for our bees. Uh, we're gonna be kind of changing the bee area just a little bit and then uh, changing the roof of our warehouse. So that should be fun, let's get started. All right guys, so let's start off with the things that I did beforehand on the episode. Now, like I always do, the thing that we're gonna build today is our already built. Um, so you're gonna see a giant farm that wasn't there before. Just ignore it. We're gonna get to building that and all that stuff in a little bit. But let's start with the things that I did before technically this episode. And it's those two things. So again, ignore that. We're gonna look at that later and we're gonna build it and I'll tell you everything. Um, but so here's what I did in between episodes. I didn't like how the bee was built. Uh, if you guys remember, we didn't really, it, it had such a weird top to it. It had like, it was flat, flat, and then just had like a little, little spire. I really didn't like that. It just looked weird. So what I did is I went ahead, let me get a better spot. I went ahead and rebuilt it. I completely basically just took the top and made it go higher. And then I added like a little sun thing. I don't know, honey, it's orange, bees. So I think this looks a million times better. Um, what do you guys think? And then the other thing that I did um, was I built a roof on the warehouse. So if you guys remember, uh, we left off last episode and we built the chorus farm, but we kind of just left it uh, sticking out of the top. I built a roof on top of it so you can kind of see. I went for like a really weird like triangle pyramid thing. It looks definitely weird, but I think it looks pretty so Like cool. I said in the beginning, we're going to be doing two things, uh, finishing the chorus farm and building the flower farm. So let's start with the chorus and we can go over to the flower. All right, everybody. So let's start off with resources that we need. So first, we're just going to be expanding our chorus farm that we built last episode. So of course, it's a very simple chorus farm. So really, all we needed was a little bit of end stone. We needed dispensers, some water buckets, uh, and then quite a few hoppers, but that, as far as the farm goes, that's really about it. Um, I explained it quite a bit last episode, but I'll just kind of like simply explain it again. So, um, the chorus fruit, it kind of just grows up vertically and it's just basically random. So this farm isn't like super, super highly efficient, uh, but it's one of the easiest ways with simply just like small balconies running along, giving the chorus room a bit of room to actually grow sideways. And that way, even if they go into the balconies, you just cut them down and obviously you pick those up. And the ones that you break down that aren't on the balcony just kind of fall below. And that's why those dispensers are there to shoot out water, bring everything to the middle, and then we have it set up to where everything that gets dropped will go down to our mass storage area down in the basement, which if you guys have been watching, we've been slowly expanding, um, moving all of our farms down there. So that was like my big vision for this world in the beginning, really, it was just like a giant industrial world. Like I didn't want 10 different farms and then all of them have separate storages. What I really wanted is a lot of farms and they all go to one central hub where we just have all of our items. I really want it to feel like automated and like a really like a like a farm factory driven world. And that's what I'm trying to achieve and this is just another step. Um, so I would love to make like an automatic chorus farm, but I don't know if that exists without the capability of like AFKing. Obviously there's AFK chorus fruit farms, but I really want something automatic and um, we will build an automatic chorus fruit farm eventually, but for now, this, for my purposes, this is really good. And just kind of, I had this like giant warehouse, right? I needed to do something with it because if you guys don't know, this was actually our original mass storage area is this warehouse. Um, but then I decided it's much easier to bring all of the items down instead of having some of the items travel sideways because the underground area is so large, I can just put them straight down. Um, and here's the most really cost effective part of this entire farm is man, these dispensers, they, they take so long to make it's actually incredible. Um, I did figure out some new tricks with crafting using um, like the, I forgot what the book is called, but like, it's like a help crafting if you forget recipes, but it can actually make crafting quicker. And this is something that I just figured out. But now we're going to start the main farm of the day. And this is the one that I was really, really excited about to start working on. We're going to be doing an automatic flower farm. So if you guys actually remember, and before I actually start, uh, in that first clip, I just moved my animals. If you guys remember all of my named animals with like dinner bone were all in this area right here, I just moved them so I could build the farm here. If you guys remember in the beginning of our playthrough, one of our first 
a builds was actually a flower farm and it, it was the base core design is actually the same one as this one having to deal with um bone meal dispenser underneath shooting bone meal into a grass area and then i forgot with our original if it was pistons or water um but it's the same core design and i'll actually explain this design i'm pretty sure at the end of the video i'm going to go through it again but it's very very simple and i actually built this after i recorded this i fixed the timings to make it as basically efficient as possible so the timings aren't perfect at the end of this video but the farm itself isn't changed but let me kind of explain it so you have a couple mechanisms you have the grass layer you have the dispenser you have the pistons and you have water it seems like a little bit of overkill for water but really each one has a separate part so the grass and dispenser obviously that's where the grass uh, that's where the flowers grow and you can see here i'm kind of setting up the base of the dispensers and the pistons you might be wondering because this is one of the things that I think a lot of people wonder is why do you have pistons and water? Why couldn't you just use the water? Because you don't need the pistons. The water will break the flowers anyway. Well, it's really for how fast and efficient it is because I want you could have the water going in every like 15 seconds or every like one second. But the time that the water takes to travel down and then get sucked back up, that's a few seconds. But with the pistons, what you can really do is they can go do, 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 really fast. And the bone meal you could set to a really high ticker is just go bone meal, bone meal, bone meal, bone meal. That way it's bone meal break, bone meal break, bone meal break. And it gives you around like five, six cycles of growth. And then the water comes along and drags all six cycles back into your hoppers. If you used just the water, you would only get one cycle per water. And one water cycle is like maybe three, four seconds. So instead of having one cycle every three or four seconds, I can have six cycles every three or four seconds. And that's why the the pistons being added is important. It's not super important. You could still, it's, you'll get more flowers that you, than you need with just the water. But just because I see, and you can see here me testing it right here. You can see how it goes like dun, 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 dun. Um, I just felt like doing it. it makes it faster makes me feel better it feels like a bigger and better farm this way um but yeah you could see me here uh really the hardest part of the entire build is just the redstone timings so the dirt and the pistons and the dispensers it's really not that big of like it's not hard to build it's not like something overly complicated but the timings can be because you really and i'll show you again at, at the end here but you have three separate timings you have the dispenser timing for the bone meal you have the water timing and you have the piston timing and obviously i put these pistons very close to each other so i kind of need to run the timings where it goes one two three three two you know what i'm saying like really so it can go back and forth you can see me here putting a bone meal you can kind of see from the outside how these farms work and again you saw the water going really fast here this is something i fixed afterwards to make it more efficient and now we're in the basement we're just building the mass storage area for it um but yeah i'm actually pretty proud of this farm and again i really went on the trend of i it's not like obviously my completely original design it's not like no one's ever done this before but i didn't look at any tutorials i did this myself um, and to give myself a little bit of room, I did end up destroying where the polar bear habitat was. So we're gonna have to be, we're gonna have to rebuild that in a future episode. But just for the sake of space, uh, I did demolish it, and you'll see it again in a minute. Um, but here you can see I'm just adding like the actual foundational structure for the farm. The farm itself is done, all the timings are correct. And if you guys are wondering about the timings, or if you want an actual redstone tutorial on this, I can do that. Just ask me in the comments. And there I destroyed my redstone, very funny. Um, but basically you just want your dispenser running as fast as possible. You want your pistons running, I forgot how many other ticks, but you basically want them going as fast as possible without the redstone, uh, uh, redstone signals getting intertwined. And then you want your water to go every like 10, 15 seconds. So we get a few cycles, but not long enough for the flowers to actually uh, despawn. Um, but yeah, that, that really the farm is pretty simple. Again, if you guys wanted a tutorial, just ask me in the comments. I'll be more than happy to make one. Um, and you can see me here adding the final touches with, um, obviously I need to get bone meal inside of those dispensers and I need a mass storage area. So what I did is I brought the hoppers all the way to the back. And this is where I'm going to be adding all the double chests filled with bone meal. So this farm can run a very, very long time. And once again, the thing I love about this is it's completely automatic. I don't have to touch it. I just put bone meal in the chest and it runs forever so what i'm going to do is 
this is like me talking to my future self. I'm going to show you a little bit more of the inner workings of the farm itself. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. So you just saw me build everything. Now, here's the thing. I did all that, but then I wasn't happy with how the flower farm actually looked. So I kind of went off camera and I changed a lot. It's almost completely different, but with the same components, just moved. So um, let's do something first, because I know I built the farm, but maybe you guys don't conceptually understand how it works. So let's go to Redstone World. Let me show you how it works, then I'll tell you what I did. All right, everybody. So I built the farm in its simplest form. Now, this is a single unit of the flower farm on our other world. We built three of them. So that's why it looks a lot bigger. Um, but I'm going to take you through the very basics of this. So we want flowers, right? Well, how do you grow a flower the easiest way? It's with a dispenser and bone meal. So we have a dispenser at the bottom, bone mealing the top. Now we want to break this flower. Now we can do it in two ways. We can use the water to break it, or we could use pistons. Now, the thing with the water is it would only bone meal once, and then water would come. And that's a slow process. So doing the pistons is a lot quicker because you can grow two or three flowers and just, you know, just keep growing while the grass moves. So you can get two or three cycles, and then the water comes. So again, you grow the flower. These pistons are constantly going, so it grows, breaks, grows, breaks, grows, breaks. And every once in a while, the water will come along and swoop it along. That's really it. The, the farm itself, it's super easy. Once again, just pistons, dispenser, and water. And then uh, this moves along. The hard, more complicated part of the uh, build itself is the timing. Because you need this to push, this to not push. This to push, this to not push. And then obviously, if you're building two or three of these next to each other, these two are going to be working in tandem. So basically you want like push, not push, push, not push. So getting those timings is a bit tricky and I'm not going to show exact timings because it's just something you kind of got to work out. And then also the timings with the water and this, but that's not too hard. The method that I used was three separate timers. You can, you can do it with a single timer, but it just gets a little bit complicated with repeaters and timing. So I'd recommend a timer for the piston, a timer for the dispenser, and a timer for uh, the dispenser shooting the bone meal. Okay, so let me show you what I actually did and then I'll tell you the changes. But you could see here, just like on my redstone world, it is literally exactly what I was talking about. Um, you just have this farm, but you have three of them, and then you have these moving, and then you have these pistons, and then the water coming. So it's a really simple design, really. Again, the timings are a little bit difficult because you have to come here and you got to get all the timings right. So these move back and forth. And then I still need to optimize the timings as far as the pistons. I think I can make the pistons go a lot quicker. Um, and obviously right now there's no bone meal in them because I'm not using it at the moment. So let me show you guys what I changed. One of the things that I changed was just a little design here. Uh, this used to be made out of just this smooth stone. I changed it to brick just so it can kind of match the ice rink here. Now, it's really a shame. This is probably one of my biggest regrets building it here is I'm really well, also the B uh, area because I'm really taking away from the ice rink. I really liked the ice rink and now you could still see most of it but this little entrance here is really cut off by the bee farm which that's fine i'm not i mean i barely use i didn't use the ice rink it was just for show um that's kind of it it's for show and then i kind of blocked this it, so it, it's a little weird but anyway just to make it look just a tiny bit better because this farm was so clustered um what i tried to do is make this farm look like maybe part of the ice rink and i'm 100 percent sure gonna build something back there um, but yeah, that's why you see it kind of connected. It's not connected, but I connected them with blocks just to kind of make it look like it. And then as far as what I changed, obviously I added this glass top over here. I moved everything back just a bit so I could give some space for these chests. So this is the storage area of the bone meal and this bone meal gets fed into past. So those chests full, filled with bone meal get fed into the dispensers under here. And then also I have some of the redstone mining coming under. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually going to leave this open right here. Um, and then here's the big thing that I really changed. If you guys saw in the video, the redstone clocks I built basically right below here in there. Well, what I did, I didn't like it because it was so messy. Um, I built all three clocks on top of each other here so I could keep really good track of the timing. So this is the timer for the dispensers. This is the timer for the pistons. And this is the timer for the water. And see, right now, let's just say I want to make the pistons faster. I come over here and I change the clock setting. 
Um, also, I just think it looks really nice. Instead of having three separate clocks with different wirings, and it looks really messy. I have them all right here. I know where all the clocks are. They're on top of each other. It's not taking up more space. The wiring is very, very simple and compact. So this was one of the big changes. So like I said, I changed basically the entire thing, but they're still the same components and they're really not any different. All right, guys. So let me quickly just show you the farm in action just for a moment. I know you saw it in action uh, in fast, like the speed up, but you guys haven't seen it without it. So let me see if I can do that for you just to kind of as you can see the water's coming sweeping along and then bone meal and then this way it'll just keep doing this as long as we have bone meal inside and if we run along obviously it's being taken down to our mass storage area which uh, we still have to decorate these two we might actually decorate them in this episode I'm gonna see how the timings are um, yeah if you come over here it's already it's okay these are just like this is junk that fell down but it's getting filled actually quick more quickly than I thought but actually here's another thing I think I might actually do it I don't want uh, the wheat seeds there's 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 no reason to keep these what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a filter system behind here and I'm gonna throw these wheat seeds in lava I don't need these this is a flower farm not a seed farm so I'm gonna go ahead and probably build that right now Alright guys, so I tried recording making a filtering system multiple times, but I just kept messing up and I was getting really frustrated. So you know what? Screw it. I just built it. So let's go ahead and talk about what I did. It's fairly simple. Honestly, I probably shouldn't even show you because we did it when we built our filtering system uh, for the mob farm, but I can show you. So all of the stuff comes down through this hopper right here. I know you don't see it, but there's a hopper right there feeding into there. The items go across there right here is where they get filtered so we just have like a standard filtering system um th this is the redstone behind it right here there's some redstone a comparator this this 18 items in here and then seeds obviously so then the seeds come through here and they get thrown into here and they get thrown into the lava anything that doesn't pass through here will just keep going come down and going to our storage area and guys the reason i did this setup with the four droppers is because these filters break if whatever you're going to the garbage if it gets full it'll actually break the filter so i did this because the saplings come very very quickly you saw just the amount that we got after just a short period so i'm scared it was going to back up so i divided it into four separate droppers so the likelihood of it getting filled is kind of low all right guys and the decorating of these two we'll do in the next episode so it's a little bit late I'm a little bit tired and this farm right here took a long time to build so I'm kind of tuckered out so guys thanks for watching if you did enjoy make sure to like and comment as a support my channel and I'll see you guys later god bless and goodbye